What's up everyone? We've been watching closed source giants like Google's Nano Banana and Seedream dominate the precise image editing space. But now we finally have a completely open source alternative that can not only compete with them, but actually beat them in many scenarios. You can run this locally, even in low-end GPUs. I'm going to show you exactly how to set it up, walk you through the entire workflow, and most importantly, reveal the secret techniques to overcome its limitations and push the quality even further. If this sounds as exciting to you as it does to me, smash that like button right now and subscribe for more ComfyUI tutorials. Now, let's get started. All right. Let's dive into this comprehensive tutorial on using the Quen Control Net workflow. I'm going to start by showing you the workflow directly from the official Comfy UI GitHub page. When you open this workflow for the first time, you'll notice that Comfy UI makes things incredibly easy for you. You can directly download any missing models right from the interface. All you need to do is click the download button next to each missing model, and it will automatically be placed in your main Comfy UI models folder. Now, while you're downloading the Quen models, there's an important step you might need to take. You may need to update Comfy UI to the latest version, which is 3.59 at the time of recording. This update is crucial because it includes new native custom nodes that support the innovative in-painting control net model we're going to be working with today. After completing the update, you'll need to restart Comfy UI completely. Once the download process finishes, you'll be ready to dive into this powerful workflow. Let me explain the specific model I'm using today. I'm working with the Quen Image FP8 scaled version. However, if you have less than 16 gigabytes of VRAM, I strongly recommend using the GGUF quantized version instead, as it's much more memory efficient. Here's a critical point that often trips up beginners. If you choose to use the FP8 scaled version, you absolutely must use the FP8 scaled text encoder. Without this pairing, the workflow simply won't function properly. Moving on to the additional components you'll need, you'll also require the Quen Image VAE and the Instant X Control Net in painting model. You'll find all the download links for these models in the description area, along with their proper storage locations within your Comfy UI setup. I'm also including the Quen Image Lightning 8-step LoRa in this workflow. This particular LoRa is a game changer because it dramatically speeds up the generation process. Instead of waiting for 30 to 50 steps for image generation, you'll be able to create high-quality images with just 4 to 8 steps while maintaining excellent image quality. To enhance the realism further, I'm stacking two additional LoRas. These work together to increase photorealism and achieve that authentic phone photo quality that's so popular in AI-generated content today. Now that we've covered the setup, let's move to the input image area. For this demonstration, I'm adding an image that I generated using FluxDev with my latest FluxGram LoRa. Watch as I open the mask editor and begin masking the specific area where I want to edit the image. This masking process is crucial because it tells the AI exactly where to focus its editing efforts. When I'm finished masking, I'll click Save to apply the mask to the image. Notice the bypassed group below the image area. You should only unbypass this group if you want to perform outpainting instead of inpainting. You can also scale the image here if needed. The default setting is 1.68, and it's important to understand that this isn't upscaling in the traditional sense. Instead, it's resizing the image to match a resolution that's optimally supported by the Quen image model. For the positive prompt, as you can see here, I've added the Lenovo LoRa trigger word at the beginning. You don't need to do this if you're not using a style LoRa. The rest of the prompt should be a clean, minimalist description of what's currently in the image, followed by a clear description of what you want to change in the masked area. In our current example, we want to transform that gray cardigan into a traditional Indian sari dress. Let's talk about some important technical settings. The model shift value is set to 3.10 by default, and I've found this to be well balanced for most situations. In the K-Sampler section, nothing too complex is happening here. We're generating an image in just 8 steps because we're utilizing the Lightning LoRa. The CFG value of 1 is well balanced, though you can increase it to 2 or 2.5 if you prefer, keeping in mind that higher values will increase generation time. 
For the sampler, I've found that the Euler sampler is the most reliable choice for the Quen image model, though Hun is also excellent if you want to experiment. All right, now we're ready to generate our first image. Since we're using the Lightning LoRa, this process will take only a few seconds once our models are loaded into VRAM. And here's our result. As you can see, the model has successfully transformed the character's clothing from the gray cardigan to a beautiful, authentic-looking sari. What's particularly impressive is that it didn't alter anything outside the masked area, which demonstrates the precision of this approach. If you've worked with previous models like Quen Image Edit or Flux Context, you'll appreciate how challenging it was to get such precise editing control. Also notice how the skin texture in the masked area seamlessly matches the untouched areas, creating a natural, cohesive look. By the way, if you're impressed by how this generated character looks, I've recently published our first Fluxgram LoRa for the Flux Dev model on Civit AI. You can download it to help you generate realistic, phone-quality AI characters. You'll find all the information about this LoRa in the description below. However, if you're completely new to Comfy UI, I highly recommend watching my previous tutorials on YouTube first. You can also visit pixelailabs.com where we offer a comprehensive beginner's course covering all the basics. We also have an updated and more advanced course that focuses specifically on creating your first AI digital influencer using Flux and One video models. Plus, you'll get access to our private Discord community filled with amazing members who actively help each other solve problems. Don't miss out on this opportunity to get all my exclusive content. Now let's return to our workflow with another example. I'm going to mask the entire character's body and transform her outfit into a futuristic looking suit. I should mention that I forgot to remove mirror selfie from the positive prompt here, which can sometimes interfere with the results. When generating the image, you can see that our character is now wearing the futuristic suit we requested, and the control net model does an excellent job maintaining the original body pose. However, the overall image quality has decreased significantly. This is exactly what we're going to address next. Here's how I'm going to fix this quality issue. First, I'm adding a Get Image Size node to the workflow. My initial approach was to capture the exact width and height of the image after scaling it to total pixels, then resize the original image using those exact dimensions. However, I discovered that this didn't produce the exact same dimensions as the final output image. That's why I'm taking a different approach. I'm going to extract the dimensions directly from the output generated image and resize our original input image to match those exact specifications. Initially, I used keep proportion to stretch, but this lowered the input image quality somewhat. So I switched to crop instead. Now I have my original input image maintaining the highest quality while matching the output image size perfectly, both at 1376 by 752 pixels. Now comes the magic part. Using the custom node Image Composite Masked, and since we already have a mask defining the area where editing applies, we can extract only the edited portions from the generated image and composite them onto our original input image. This technique works, but we need to take one additional step to perfect it. We need to expand the mask slightly and blur the edges to create smooth, well-fused transitions that make the images blend together seamlessly. When comparing the two images now, you can see that our new composite image looks significantly better and maintains much higher quality compared to the directly generated edited image. Now, when comparing our result to the same image processed with Nano Banana, you can see that both images now have amazing quality. However, the suit in the Nano Banana result appears more futuristic with neon lights and additional details. The reason for this difference is that our realism LoRa's are actually working against us in this creative scenario. We need to disable them and keep only the lightning LoRa active. I'm also removing mirror selfie from the positive prompt. Here's the result after these adjustments. It's remarkably close to what Nano Banana produced. By using the image composite mask technique, we've improved our image quality dramatically. Let me show you another example where our Quen image model actually outperforms Nano Banana. 
I'm going to transform this character into a mermaid. First, I'll mask the area where I want to make image editing. I'll add the appropriate positive prompt and begin generating. This is our initial result using the Lightning LoRa with 8 steps. However, this approach will heavily constrain our results because for this type of creative transformation, we need the model to be more imaginative and detailed. To achieve this, I'm going to disable the Lightning LoRa and use the full 30 steps with a CFG value between 4 and 4.5 using either the Hun or Euler sampler. This way, we're utilizing the model's complete creative potential. When generating with these settings, we achieve a stunning transformation of our realistic character into a beautiful, detailed mermaid. Comparing this result with Nano Banana's output using the same prompt, I think we can confidently say that this time, we've surpassed it. That wraps up today's comprehensive tutorial. As always, you'll find this complete workflow included in the description below. If you found this tutorial helpful, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe for more advanced AI tutorials. You can also directly support the channel by enrolling in one of our detailed courses. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.